You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From Los Angeles, California, and Maria Menounos, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. Spotlight On is a long-form interview series featuring actors and TV personalities. And now, from the world's number one TV after-show platform, this is AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. Hello, AfterBuzzers. Now, I know most of you may not hear this song and, and think AfterBuzz, uh, but we're about to change the game. I have Guy Wilson, who plays Will Horton on Days of Our Lives here, the one of the first soap stars ever to set foot in the AfterBuzz TV studio. <laughs> That's a pretty lofty statement. So... I don't know if I'm a star just yet, <laughs> but uh, certainly happy to, uh, to to tread here. Well, you're a star in all of the fans' eyes. Certainly in my own mind. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so I want to welcome you here, Guy. Thank you for coming in. Uh, we have been so excited to talk to you because this is sort of not in AfterBuzz's alley at all, and uh, we want to, you know, start strolling down a new avenue of uh, of soap. And it's it's an amazing audience. It is. Uh, it's it's an amazing audience. It's a dedicated audience. Um, one thing I really come to learn is, the days of our lives is is truly an American institution, and and generations of Americans have grown up with this show and watched this show, and so the level of uh, devotion is on a. It's, um, it's, it's a special thing. It's staggering. I was talking to my mom today before I came in, and she actually said that. Uh, she watched Days of Our Lives when she was a teenager and probably when she was pregnant with me. And I remember growing up with Sammy's issues and seeing when your <laughs> character was born and yep. all of the Marlena drama. And, yep. you know, it's, it's a big deal. So thank you for leaving Salem, coming yeah. to After Buzz today. Of course. We appreciate it. Of course. Uh, so obviously I need to open up by talking about the wedding. I rewatched the wedding. So congratulations, you're a newlywed. Thank how, you. How does it feel? Um, there's... <laughs> Uh, you know, wearing a ring is a little surreal at first, but uh, it, it fits well, and um, I thought I looked pretty good in a tux, so I had fun with that, and other than that, it's just kind of life, uh, life is normal for Will, in, in, in terms of moving through each day. Mm -hmm. I think I, what I took away most from the wedding itself was that it was not two men getting married, it was two people getting married. I, I, I'm, I'm glad that that's uh, how it seemed for you, and that's certainly what we wanted the effect to be. We, we want this storyline, and by we, I mean, you know, the producers and, and, and the writers who've been, uh, as I've said before, very fearless in, in guiding this story in a direction that I, I think um, honors the relationship between Will and Sonny, um, mm -hmm. and, and honors the concept that love is love. Um, it's not about um, what gender you are, it's, it's about caring for someone. I also liked that it was not about the wedding it was also the drama was peppered in which i appreciated oh yeah i mean it, this is salem it's a soap opera because so. like when is there not going to be drama between the two mother-in-laws right i thought the toast was hysterical yeah. that I, was so awkward i put my head down i was like oh, i can't even imagine if that happened to me oh my god yeah I, I, one of the it's it, it was um we all cringed. <laughs> we didn't have to act. There were very few moments in that episode where any of us had to act because we were all, uh, as actors, having so much fun uh, in our characters because so many things, um, so many storylines that had evolved over so many years mm -hmm. um, were coming to a head or, or, or were just presenting themselves all in the same room. Uh, and, and so to, to play with all of those tones, all of that energy, was it was so fun. So fun. It's so weird to think that you're married. You know, like, did you ever think that you would be married this young, this soon? In, in your fictional life, obviously. Oh, in my fictional life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, no, and, and never mind the fact that I'm, that I'm married. I, I, I have a daughter. I have a right? beautiful daughter, Ariana Grace Horton. And um, <laughs> it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just, it's fun. I, so often, you know, leading up to, uh, to where I'm at now with d days, most mm -hmm. of the characters I've played are, you know, generally, generally in the area, you know, in the age between 18 and and 22 and you know Will Horton is, is still very much a young man mm -hmm. you know he's in his early 20s right. um, but to be able to play a, a character who you know in addition to growing into young adulthood who's also grappling with these newfound responsibilities of fatherhood of marriage mm -hmm. and the commitments um, 
that come with that. As an actor, it's, it's new frontier for me. It's new territory, and it's, it's great. I want to talk a little about the father-son apology moment yeah. um, during you know, the pre-vows. The pre uh, I found that to be amazing. I, I think I got more emotional during that than, I mean, obviously the vows were great, but just the, the simple, I'm sorry, you know, I, I, it took me a while to come around and I see that you're happy. So how did you sort of prepare yourself for that? Because your facial reactions were amazing. You know, you were living it. At least I felt that way. Thank you. Uh, it's for that particular moment. And, and what I have found, what serves me best for those types of, of moments in an actor where there's just a lot, when there's a lot of history, when a lot of history comes to, uh, to a head in a scene, I think the, the worst thing to do is to over-prepare or to sort of over-anticipate what your reaction is going to be. Um, now, Brian Tatello, who plays my father, Lucas Horton, who's, who's been on the show for a long time and um, in, in many ways is you know, one of the faces of the show, right. he has lived a life, you know, truly, on this show. And so I knew, just because you know, of who he is and, and his skill as an actor, I knew that he was going to bring the heat. I knew that he knew the gravity of this moment. And so I kind of went into that. I wasn't really, I didn't feel any anxiety. I just knew all I had to do was listen. Because mm -hmm. um, he's a very, very, Brian's a very connected actor. And I knew that if I just listened to him and just sort of allowed myself to drop into the moment and, and to be aware of the meaning of this moment, you know, not just between father and son, but just the greater meaning, which, which is, in, in, in my mind, acceptance. Mm -hmm. Acceptance, unconditional acceptance. So I want to talk a little bit about history. Obviously, you are not the person that originated this role. Um, so I want to talk about the challenges, sort of, that you maybe had to overcome once you, you, you know, you got this role. The, you, you know, it, it's a big deal. Yeah. There's fans get so attached to these characters. They're watching them every day. Uh, did you receive a warm welcome? I did from the cast, absolutely. From from day one, I was embraced uh, as one as. as one of the gang, and, and that meant more to me than I can ever express in words. And, and I really wasn't, I didn't feel any sort of trepidation. I, I, I didn't really feel like I'd be hazed or anything crazy like that. <laughs> but the, just the level of graciousness that was extended to me uh, really helped ease me in. And I think the other, I think it was almost a benefit that because things happen so quickly, the transition happened so quickly, I, I really didn't have a chance to like psych myself out or to think about it too much. I was able to just jump in and start working and, and mm -hmm. start doing my homework on the relationships between the characters. Right. How many episodes did you watch uh, after you found out that you got the role? Because obviously, you know, you can't kissy the collection of all, but there's not that much time. Right. I, you know, it's interesting. And when I think about it in hindsight, I spent more time. I certainly, I watched maybe maybe two or three complete episodes, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and then I, I watched some of the scenes that were, you know, between Sonny and Will just to get an idea to sort of see over time how, how their level of intimacy mm -hmm. evolved. But I, if anything, I spent just as much if more time just pouring over um, family trees to charts just to see, you know, where do the relationships begin? Where do they end? Uh, because so Everywhere. much of it is intertwined. <laughs> it's, it's a matrix. It is like entering the matrix. It's, it's all interconnected in some way, shape, or, or form. And um, I, I found, I think with soaps, I think part of what people connect with and part of what makes them make soap so engaging are the relationships. Mm -hmm. There are fascinating characters, but without the different give and take, the, the different pulls between characters, the, um, the relationships, there's really not much to watch. And, and I was really focused on getting, understanding the relationships. Uh, so as far as relationships, obviously, you know, you have to connect with this co-star. That's obviously your love interest. Yeah. Uh, did you guys hang out before, um, you know, you actually had to film? Did you get an opportunity to get to know each other? We did. We did. And it, it's interesting. It's, uh, I suppose you could use the words serendipity. Freddie Smith, uh, who plays Sonny, who, mm -hmm. um, you know, he and I used to both work out at the same uh, LA Fitness here, uh, here in LA. Amazing. The one over at a Universal City, and um, that's where I go. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a good facility. So not to not to plug them, but yeah. anyways, um, I I was um, walking into work out, and he came up to me, and, and he'd recognized me from some auditions, and, mm -hmm. and he just you know said, hey, he's like you know he you know because we had both auditioned for days in the past, gotcha. you know, and uh, he recognized me from from that, and was, he was just so friendly it really made an impression and we, we had a lot of mutual friends even at that point mm -hmm. and um so it was just nice to connect with him and, and have a friendly acquaintance so now you know what a year year and a half 
goes by, and, and I have the blessed fortune to, to take over this role. All right. New year, and, new role. Uh, yeah. And so we did have a chance to meet up. He was ready immediately. We, we got together at one of our favorite, uh, one of his favorite diners, which mm -hmm. has become one of my favorite diners um, up in Toluca Lake, and just had a long lunch and just talked and talked about the relationship, but more just just connected, you know, as Guy and Freddie, not right. so much worrying about, you know, Will and Sonny, but just um, just getting sort of caught up and, and just sort of um, just, you know, just sharing who we are. And fortunately, there were just it was it was easy to connect with them. Obviously, you two have to share very intimate moments on camera with each other. So how was, you know, the first kiss on set? I mean, I, I have never kissed somebody on film. Really? <laughs> so I just I can't even imagine how that would be, and and you know so much pressure on on the both of you because you know you're a, a gay couple on a daytime show, and that is sort of groundbreaking in itself. Right. Since he was you know one of the first gay characters introduced, or the first. Right. And then and then this wedding, you know. So how did you to connect in that way on set? Walk me through that experience for you. Sure. I, I um. Our very first kiss actually came in the screen test. Uh, I, you know, I had the, the studio, the network had me screen test before mm -hmm. hiring me, which is pretty standard. Yeah. Um, and it was, this, it, was a very, it was a scene that was written for the screen test. It wasn't anything you know, directly taken from the story, uh, or, or so I was told. And uh, the scene culminated uh, in a very passionate kiss uh, between the two characters. And before we got to that portion of the scene, when we were you know, rehearsing it, you know, the director took us aside and said, so how do you, do you guys feel comfortable doing this? And, and I, of course, was. And I understood, you know, so much of what the network was looking for was to see that I could connect with, exactly. with, with Freddie. And Freddie, again, you know, we hadn't really seen each other because this was before we had a chance to get lunch. So we hadn't really seen each other since that day at the gym, but he was right, right so off the bat. So gym buddies to make out buddies. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It was, and like that. <laughs> and so he was right off the bat. He's like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And, and he said, okay, well, he said, look, just so you know, like generally the technique, you know, for, you know, is, is we sort of just kiss like this, kind of like open mouth, mm -hmm. limited tongue, you know, right. because we want to keep it suitable for all viewers. And yeah. We just kind of went for it, and and the fact that he was, you know, as as ready and willing to be as fearless as I was wanting to be, made it, uh, made it easier. That's um, amazing. And then going forward, once we started working together, actually, you know, we had a distinct, we had a specific, and I remember this moment. We had a very specific conversation over lunch um, about how we both wanted to just go for it, you know, right. really take advantage of what this relationship offered to us as performers mm -hmm. and, 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 and how we can serve the story and, and the greater significance of the story. Um, you know, we were both have been, you know, even before having the opportunity to be on the show, um, you know, very, very strong supporters of uh, the LGBT movement mm -hmm. and, um, and, and marriage equality. And right. so we recognized that this was an opportunity not just to act and to have fun, you know, but to, to do something of service. And, and that's kind of how we, we both approached it. So there was never any trepidation about mm -hmm. going there. Right. You know. Did you ever think that you would sort of be a representative for the LGBT community? Because it's sort of turned into that. It has. Um, I've always wanted to be a representative of, of, of something. Or, 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 I mean, I guess I suppose as a, you know, growing up, my dream was always, you know, I, ideally I'd like to, you know, affect social change in a positive way. Right. You know, all of my heroes and entertainment or politics, but mostly, you know, my heroes in entertainment, um, a part of why I'm drawn to them or part of what inspires me is not just their talent, but just their ability to just to have a positive influence, right. you know? And so I don't really, I'm, I'm just grateful to be in a position now to where I can hopefully help people, hopefully provide a voice for, for people and an example for people who, who might, you know, still be unsure or, or might still feel unsafe about being who they are or expressing who they are. Well, I was going to say, you know, your character sort of went through a, a struggle for acceptance within himself, with others, and sort of Marlena helped him through that, was his confidant. Um, so I want to know if anybody's reached out to you saying that, you know, you helped them through their hard times. Absolutely. And, and, and Absolutely, and, and that's, you know, more rewarding than I could e express in, in words, fans that have reached out and, and said, because of the way Marlena has helped Will, her support, it made it easier for me, it made it possible for me to come out to my grandmother right. and, and to reach out to her, or it made it possible for, for my mother or my father to come to me and say, it's okay, you're okay, this is all okay, you know, and... Uh, you know, because Days of Our Lives has, um, it has a, a wide, 
a wide uh, a widespread of influence. A lot of people watch it, and um, just to show by example, um, it's certainly we've certainly. And when I say we, I mean everyone at the show has had um, has had a chance to uh, to to experience the positive effects. Right. So, how was it working with Deidre? Oh man, I was because so intimidated in, in when, the beginning. Oh, every time I look at her, she is just gorgeous. She's so regal <laughs> and so graceful um, and so strong. She's so much strength um, in, in her eyes. Mm -hmm. it, it's like she can she can level anybody with her eyes, and I think that's part of what makes her so powerful uh, as a performer. So the first time I worked with her, when I knew I was driving to work that day and I knew I had these scenes with her, and they were legit scenes. It wasn't just like popping in and being like, hey, Grandma, these were actual, <laughs> right. you know, acting scenes. Yeah. And um, I was nervous, you know, because mm -hmm. most of my work at that point had been with Freddie, and we already had a very comfortable rapport. Yeah. And so to, uh, to work with, uh, with Deidre Hall, I was nervous. So we get there. First thing she does is she comes up to me when I'm still in the makeup chair. She says, hey, honey, let's, let's work on this. Come back to my room. Let's work on this. I want to, let's talk. And she laid out, she said, look, these are the little, these are the nuanced aspects uh, mm -hmm. between the relationship of, of Will and Marlena. And this is how it's evolved. And so I want you to be aware of, you know, be, of this, you know. And, and she said, she gave me this checklist of things to be, you know, just to, to take into account. Right. And then she said, now throw it all away. You know, just let it go, mm -hmm. which is the, the best thing you can give to an actor. Because, again, you don't want to be you know, calculate it, you right. know, and, um, and then we just ran the scene, and it was fun, and then we went up there, and, and we did it, and I had fun, and then she just gave me this warm smile, and her eyes were sparkling, and she, like, patted me on the hand, and she said, good job, kid, you know, and I was like, yeah. thank God, I'm so glad, you know, it was just so nice to be taken in, mm -hmm. you know, by someone who I have, you know, just have so much respect for. Yeah, every uh, article that I read that she was featured in when you sort of made the transition to coming on the show, she had nothing but kind words to say. She said, you know, why not accept this kid? He's great. <laughs> he's eager. He's passionate. He wants to do this. He wants to make it the best he can be. And, you know, she was sort of really proud of, of the moment, you well, know. She didn't have to say those things. But <laughs> it warms my heart that she did. And it's true. Like, I'm, this is, this is a, a dream come true for me. I've been working, you know, I've been in L.A. for a for, for a minute. It's been a little while. And so to have an opportunity to act every day and to, to make a living doing what I love, that's all anyone could hope for, I feel like. So you said before that you watched, you know, three episodes and then some sort of relationship scenes. Did you carry over any Will-isms from the last person that played Will? Or did you sort of try and make your own thing happen with the character. Sure. Well, you know, my predecessor Chandler Massey is a fantastic actor and he has the accolades to prove that. And I think one of his strong suits was his vulnerability. He's, he, he's very natural when it comes to vulnerability. And I think it, it suits Will. It suits the relationship between Will and Sonny very well. So I was, I've been wanting to just be very aware uh, about the dynamic between Will and Sonny. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like Sonny is very grounded. Will is very passionate. Um, other than that, I really, if anything, have made a conscious effort not to emulate. You know, one one of the things I noticed, um, and I, I just sort of picked up these sort of visual habits just from movement classes. Is mm -hmm. is you know my, my predecessor, you know Chandler, um, I got the sense he moves you know in scenes like he carries himself leading with his shoulders. Right. You know, and um, so I kind of wanted to change that. I wanted to lead more with my chest or with my hips, just to like, you know, just okay. to sort of like bring it, you know, make it a little bit more of my own, but without you know changing things too drastically. So little stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Huh. Do you share any similarities with Will in real life? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us everything. Oh my goodness. I, his, um, Will, I, you know, I, I used the word passionate before. He's very passionate. Mm -hmm. And I know I just, I'm, I just, whether I want to be or not, I'm very passionate. I've been told that I'm very impulsive. I am impulsive, let's be honest. I have a very impulsive nature. And, um, I, I have, you know, I'm very sensitive. I'm, I'm a sensitive <laughs> young man. I'm a sensitive. I, I feel things. I, I feel my feelings on a on a on a on a pretty intense level sometimes, mm -hmm. and, and it serves me as an actor. And sometimes I'd like to just leave it at work, but um, I'd say certainly in those respects, I think, um, you know, I, I'm, I care very much about my family right. and uh, Will. I've I've never played a character who's so invested in the loved ones and caring about the loved ones in his life. And so that resonates with me. Um, his, his eagerness, uh, you know, toward fatherhood, fatherhood and, and, you know, family is something that uh, means a lot to me that I hope, you know, when the time is right. One day. And, and one day, you know, that's something that I, that, uh, 
I would like to have come to me in time. So it's, it's exciting for me to have this experience, uh, you know, playing a, a young man who is working so hard to, to foster, you know, to, to grow a family. Well, it's like practice. Exactly. It's great yeah, practice. Exa paid practice. Yeah. <laughs> paid practice, the best <laughs> practice. Right. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about your sort of grueling schedule because soaps are notoriously known. Obviously, we see you five days a week yeah. on the TV. Um, and, you know, you guys don't take off. <laughs> How is that for you? Because this, to me, has been put as boot camp like that's what i've heard like it's acting boot camp it is and, and and that's one i think that's absolutely true that it doesn't you know it doesn't have to only be that mm -hmm. but at the very least it will be that right um i've you know for me i've just been excited to to dive in but certainly you know uh, the daytime drama work schedule there's a lot of it differentiates from prime time in a lot of respects most prime time shows you know, you'll work you know, four to six or four to eight months nonstop, right. and then you'll get a four or five month break, a hiatus, mm -hmm. an extended hiatus. Whereas uh, with days, we generally work three to five weeks straight through, weekends off, mm -hmm. and then we'll get a week off, and then we'll get a couple weeks off for, you know, Fourth of July or Christmas or something like that, mm -hmm. you know. But we generally don't have any extended, um, extended time off. And I, 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 there's a silver, I mean, I like it, and sometimes it's, um, Sometimes it'd be nice if it were the, the prime time schedule, really only because, you know, if you're on a prime time schedule where you have a few months off, then you generally have an opportunity to, to try to do a project on the side, right. you know, whether it's a, an independent movie or even a play or, or television, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but on the flip side, being able to get a week off after, you know, three to five weeks of, you know, having to memorize 20 to 30 pages a day is, is, is great, if only just for, for maintaining sanity, <laughs> you know. So I know that you had off today. Yes. Um, what did your Monday look like? Without giving anything away, because I don't want to spoil anything for fans, but, you know, can you just, like, walk us through the day? Sure. Um, generally, what it, the way it works, so let's say, um, you know, our shoot day is generally 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., mm -hmm. you know, and, and we get, like, a lunch, but there's always something happening. So let's say your scenes are in the second half of the day, then generally, you know, your call time isn't until around noon, mm -hmm. and then you get there, and you block out your scenes during the lunch break, and then you go in the hair and makeup, and then you meet up with the actors you're working with and you guys run your lines. You know, it, it, there's a very, um, it's very, um, it, it really resembles theater in, the, in that respect. Mm -hmm. You just instantly find each other and just work, run lines and, and figure out like where like the really interesting opportunities are to, to really put in some beats. Uh, how many takes do you generally do? Not Cause enough. I, I mean, <laughs> really, how much time is there? Not enough. It's and this is where the um, you used the term boot camp before, mm -hmm. and I think this is where that's that's a very apt description. Because um, you have to nail it. You generally get you block it right, mm -hmm. so you block it with director, okay. and, and that's just very you know informal. You know, you got your script in hand, you're just marking down. Okay, so you know, across the down downstage right, you know, play it to camera two, find your light there. Right. You know, look back here. Don't you know stuff like that. It's yeah. just all technical, right? But then when you get to set to shoot it. Um, you get one rehearsal, which is really they do for camera. You know, it's, right. it's, it's just as much for us. It's not like they're giving us the rehearsal. It's, it's for everyone. Yeah. And you get one take. And um, unless you screw up, you have to do it again. Ah. But it's not cool to screw up, you know. Right. You don't really get in trouble. But it's like you don't want to be that guy, yeah. you know, that actor who, you know, yeah. caused, you know, costs Halts everything. Time. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what I found, what that does, what it forces one to do is to be ready. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you're there and you got to jump off that cliff and you've got one take. And however that goes, that's what people are going to see. Right. That's what's going to be on television. And, and so you have to be you have to be fearless. You have to be prepared and um, you have to be professional. Do you ever get the chance to improv anything or it's strictly, you know, here's the script. You have to sort of stick like, you know, well, stick good, to it like glue. That's a good question. I'd say it's a middle ground. I, I would not say improv. We don't ever improv. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say you've got, you know, a full page monologue. You know, if a word or two or three or four changes, right. it's okay as long as the story, as long as the meaning is conveyed. Right. But the fact is, we don't really ever need to, to improv. Our writers are fantastic, mm -hmm. you know, and they're also, they give us a lot of leeway. They trust us as actors, which is a very liberating feeling knowing that you know, we can be dropped into the scene, and as long as we're conveying the story the way the writers want the story conveyed, then, you know, generally it's okay, you know. So it's been a few months, obviously, since you started. Are you comfortable now? Like, have you, have you settled in? I've settled in in that I feel like there aren't any more surprises coming <laughs> my way. Right. But I've also found, and this is, you know, just speaking for myself personally, I've found that um, 
I'm in a new stage. It's never not a challenge. And I'm finding now that I've been filming, you know, for a few months, um, it's, it's the onus is on me to find ways to, you know, to stay sharp, to constantly bring, um, bring sort of a, a, a specific viewpoint to every scene, mm -hmm. you know, it's so easy. And I feel like this is true in any job. It's easy to go on autopilot sometimes when you become good at something, right. it's easy to just, you know, as they say, rest on your laurels and just kind of go on autopilot. Mm -hmm. And, um, there's no exception to this. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think now the new, the new challenge I'm, I'm learning, um, and, and by challenge, you know, just the new, the new thing I'm trying to be very hyper aware of is not slowing down in terms mm -hmm. of, um, you know, my, um, my, my dedication to, to constantly keeping it fresh. Does yes. that make sense? Yeah. I, I yeah. Makes sense to me. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. Last soap question, okay. and then I'm going to transition to more of your personal life, sir. Okay. Uh, where do you see Will Sun in 10 years? Where do you see them as a oh, couple? Man, in 10 years? Yeah. We're not talking 10 months, we're talking 10 years. Well, I haven't thought about. So your daughter will be, well, how old is that? So she'll, she'll be uh, on she'll the be show. 11 she's, she's, or 10? Yeah, she'll, she'll, that's about right. Okay. I mean, time time is kind of in a special continuum yes. in the yes. soap <laughs> world, so we'll see. I, I think, when I think about Will and Sonny, and when I think about how other relationships in the soap world have fared over time, I think one of the distinct advantages that Will and Sonny have is their, um, their commitment to communication. Mm -hmm. Um, certainly things are never perfect and there's going to be some, some bumps in the road coming up that the viewers can look forward to. But that said, they have an ability to communicate that most, if not all, soap couples that I, that I have seen, um, they, don't, they, they don't communicate at that level. Okay. So that gives me uh, a lot of faith, a lot of confidence that if ever there were a relationship built to last, it would be Will and Sonny. Uh, certainly, that's what I would like. On a personal level, that's what I want. Well, I think that's what fans want, too. Uh, yeah, I hope so. I hope they like us. Yeah. <laughs> I think they do. Yeah. I have had a very positive reception this week <laughs> tweeting at your fans. I, Thank you guys so much for yeah. submitting questions. I appreciate it. We will totally get to your questions in a little bit, but I want to find out more about this guy. Okay. Uh, so I want to know, uh, where, where did you start? What was your first job that you ever booked? Well, if we're talking a professional job, professional, the, very first, sure, the very first professional job, I was 16 years old, or was I 15? I think I was, I, I was, uh, I would think I was 16 years old, mm -hmm. and it was a, a non-union pilot presentation about, uh, it was a show, and, okay. a, and a pilot presentation is, it's like a pilot, but it's shorter than a full pilot. It's okay. just about 10, 12 minutes. All right. Um, and it was about this, this team of um, competitive skateboarders who befriend an alien, and then they fight <laughs> evil aliens, you know, and... Um, it was, it was a thrilling experience. We only shot over two days, but it, it was thrilling for me because one, it was my first professional job, mm -hmm. uh, and it was also nerve wracking because because the characters skateboarders, and I, I'm not a skateboarder. And I, they made you skateboard. Well, t they realized pretty quickly <laughs> that I'm, you know, they don't, they shouldn't leave the camera on Just me for no too long. Just no coordination. Yeah, so it's like when you do see me on the board, it's like I'm like trying, and at one point there was one take where I fell off the board and face planted into the camera and. I was wearing a helmet. Unfortunately, the camera wasn't wasn't broken. But everyone immediately rushed to the camera, you know, to make sure the camera <laughs> wasn't broken because that thing's worth a lot more than they were Forget paying about me. About this guy, yeah. Jeez. So that was uh, that was my first professional, my first professional gig. Yeah. Well, that obviously wasn't the moment that you decided you wanted to be an actor. So when was like the aha moment? Because a lot of people that I talk to on this show, not that they have a definitive moment, but it's just like, oh, this is what I meant to do. So when was that for you, and when did you realize that you know you needed to be doing this full time? Sure, my uh, the very first my very first experience performing, um, I was I turned I was eight, I was eight turning nine, mm -hmm. and it was a it was a, a holiday performance of a Christmas Carol, and um, I played Tiny Tim, and and that adorable. I I, I think so, <laughs> and. Uh, just the the experience of being a part of this this huge ensemble cast doing this this production and, and you know Christmas was coming I mm -hmm. I just I loved it I loved hanging out backstage with these older people these older kids I mean they who were only like twelve but when you're when you're eight a twelve year old that's cool that's to amazing. hang with a twelve year old yeah I just I loved it it was this new world and I loved it and so I did a, I did a lot of theater when I was young mm -hmm. and then I was about thirteen when I saw Raiders of the Lost Ark for the first time, Indiana Jones, and um, just seeing Harrison Ford. I, I've always, he was my first favorite actor, and um, 
that's when I knew I wanted to be a movie star. You know, I, I loved acting, mm -hmm. you know, but that's when I knew I wanted to be a movie star, you know. Was your family supportive of it? Because I know, I, I mean, I am not an actor, but I am on the on-camera side of things. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. And they're supportive of me, so how was that? You know, when you finally said to them, like, hey, guys, I think I want to take the leap. They were completely supportive. And that's, and, and that's it, it is. And it's a blessing. It, it's it's something that uh, you, you can't you cannot put a value on it. Mm -hmm. um, so many, so many talented, talented, passionate young performers don't have that blessing, you know. And um, I know me w when I think uh, in terms of how I've gotten to where I'm at now, it never mm -hmm. could have happened if I didn't have the, the love and the support of my family. The, the emotional support, yeah. Uh, what was the oddest job you've ever booked? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many. Um, okay, pick like, uh, think top okay, three. Okay, so here's okay. The, the most, the most, the one that was just most surreal and weird and carnivalesque. I It was the summer of 2007, mm -hmm. and I booked like this, this supporting lead role in this ultra low budget horror movie. I, I don't even want to say the title. <laughs> And, um, so many greats have started out in low budget oh, yeah. horror. Jennifer oh, yeah. Aniston in Leprechaun. Come oh my on. gosh, she was amazing in that. <laughs> uh, Renee Zellweger and and uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Right. Um, I think Matthew McConaughey was in that as well. Mm. Um, and this this movie was about this this demon um, who who comes and terrorizes this construction crew. And we shot this thing inside this big mansion in Reseda, up on the cell in Reseda. And normally this mansion is used for for porn shoots. And so oh the mansion was just all these pink you know plush you know shag right. carpets and everything. And they had this massive garage, and that's where they built this sound stage <laughs> um, that had no air conditioning. And it's the middle of summer in Reseda, so it was a hot as blazes. And next door, like like the next property was just sort of like this weird sort of farm and they had goats and the goats kept getting out of the pen and the goats kept coming <laughs> in onto set um, and, and they were biters. They liked to headbutt and they were biters. And so we had an issue where they would headbutt the PAs and, and really hurt the PAs. And we had to figure out how to keep these goats off set. That was just one of the things, and we had some of the some of the crew were, were kind of crazy, mm -hmm. um, I literally uh, to the point where it was, things almost came to blows. Sh <laughs> just nuts. It was just nuts. Um, and, and you're still acting now. I'm still <laughs> acting. And now, and here's the thing, Jillian. This was you know my first like full length you know feature movie that I had booked, and right. I was I was young. I was what I was twenty twenty one. Mm -hmm. And so to me, despite all of that, I was still just happy to be there. You know, right. and. Um, and thank goodness, because so many of the other more seasoned actors were just ready to throw in the towel. And there were a couple times we thought production would be shut down. It wasn't. <laughs> I, I've never seen, I'm remiss in that I haven't seen, I've never seen that movie. I should try to get a copy. I don't know where I could. I, hmm. I, I should track down the director, but I, now that I've kind of badmouthed the movie, nah. I hope he doesn't see, <laughs> see this interview. So we'll see. So it was a porn shoot with monsters and goats. That's yeah. the takeaway. And, and, and by the way, the demon was... Um, was was special looking. Um, I mean, I mean, the actor who played him was phenomenal. But just right. the, there's the art design, the the costume design. Um, they had him in these like, like twelve inch platform heels. He was like he was like a disco demon. Oh. And, and I, it was, it was um, it was it was just special. Let's just leave it at that. That's the best euphemism I can come up with. Yeah. Uh, so I want to move over to some fan questions sure. because they've been amazing all week tweeting me. Yeah. Uh, so other than the proposal scene, uh, or the wedding scene. What has been your favorite with the two characters? With Will and Sonny? Yes. Or or a scene that you've been a part of that's sure. been your favorite. I, there are some scenes, so I can't get too detailed, because there are some scenes that will be coming up and airing soon Ooh. that I'm very, very excited about. Um, but in terms of what's aired... Um, we had a lot of fun. Uh, the the scene uh, which you touched upon with the two mothers sort of mm -hmm. bickering about you know the planning of the wedding where uh, we were in uh, Sonny's club and and um, Judy Evans w was sitting on one side and Allison Sweeney was on the other and then Freddie and I were in the middle mm -hmm. sort of literally just caught in the crossfire and right. you know Ju you know Judy Evans and, and Allison Sweeney are just such powerhouse talented actors and, and to see them just like spit fire back and forth <laughs> I mean we're just trying to keep a straight face. Um, that was fun, um, and, and then in terms of just scenes with uh, where it's just Freddie and I, um, the uh, the bachelor party, the bachelor okay, party when okay. uh, when Tad called in a, a stripper and the, the the company accidentally sent um, you know a, a gorgeous bombshell blonde. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, to, to give us lap dances. And it was funny because when I was reading the script, you know, that week I, I read that and I texted Freddie. I said, have you read, you know, script number, you know, number, number, we're number. We're getting strippers we're, on we're, set. We're, we're getting a lap dance from a, from a woman. <laughs> and, and he texted me and said, you're kidding me. And I said, no, read the script. And he said, this is a first. Like, I've, this, is, this has never happened. That was that. So that was fun. That was a, that was a different. That was a different kind of day for us. Oh gosh. Um, okay. So you tweeted that you attended the Glad Media Awards this weekend. Yes, yeah, Saturday. Um, yeah. So how was that overall experience for you? It was one of the, it was some of the most fun I've ever had. Um, mm -hmm. I've you know I, I had the privilege of being able to you know walk the red carpet and and I had done some stuff like that before at you know movie premieres and film festivals. Right, but not but with Jennifer Lopez. Not like this, not like. at all. You know, and and to have just you know just rows and rows of, of photographers with the big fancy cameras, you know, taking pictures of me. You know, mm -hmm. I I just had this distinct sensation during that. I'm just thinking like I'm doing what I've always wanted to do and. I just couldn't stop smiling. I, right. I just—it was so much fun, and, and to be there as a representative for the show, to, to be a part of uh, of the Glad Awards, mm -hmm. which has been so steadfast uh, and so important to so many people, that also was an honor. And then being able to just do it to to do interviews and mm -hmm. and to just you know have a chance to connect and share my experience, and, and it was it was so much fun. And then of course the award show itself was awesome. You know. Well, we were talking about Lupita before, yeah. obviously, an Oscar winner in your presence. Yeah, um, and and uh, just stunning as ever uh, at, at the show, and just it was just it was I just felt you know again I've I've been you know pursuing this professionally for you know a little bit over ten years now, mm -hmm. and um, it really meant a lot to me to to be a part of something on this scale, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, if you had an ideal dinner party guest, dead or alive, who would it be? Dead or alive? Mm -hmm. um, Your fans are, they, they just want to know everything. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, to be honest, I, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, I kind of have to be Jesus because that's, I mean, and, and I'm, you know, that's, I just, I would like to know about, you know, I'd like to get his take on things. What would you serve him? Are you a cook? I'm not. <laughs> I would, I'd bring in a caterer for that okay. kind of an event. So I would say either, 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 you know, Jesus or, or Barack Obama. I would love to spend some, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big fan of his. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, one of your fans want to know if Will and Sonny have an amazing summer storyline. If you even know we that far do, ahead. We do, no. Um, we do, yeah. We've been because sh our show, you know, in terms of the calendar, we're a little bit ahead of how we are. So, you know, right, right. now it's it's April in mm -hmm. this in our reality. Uh, on the show, I believe we're in August okay. now or something like that. Right. Um, and and there's again, there are some really, I'm so excited with where these these storylines that are really developing now that are airing now they're going to crash into each other in a mm -hmm. big, violent, exciting way. And I mean violent, emotionally, physical, all of that. And so. That all happens, you know, in, in the summer for the show, and it's, um, it's, it's going to change a lot of things. And uh, so we've shot a lot of some cool summer stuff, and, and now we're at a point where um, all the characters are kind of dealing with the aftermath. Mm -hmm. um, so there's just as much drama there. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, exciting yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one final fan question. Are you single, dating, or in a relationship, <laughs> sir? I um, I think I'm going to have to plead the fifth oh, on that one. Oh, you devil. I'm sorry. They're going to kill me. They're going to kill me. Well, I couldn't get out of him. You tried. <laughs> you tried. Uh, so I want to play a little fun game with you while we still have some time. Okay. Uh, I brought an hourglass. Oh, how fitting. Um, and I have some rapid fire questions that I'm going to ask you. Okay. Uh, it can be a yes or no answer as in depth as you want it. You just... Go ahead and go with your so feelings. So what am I dealing with? Is that like one minute, two minutes? Uh, I actually have no idea okay. how long this well, is. I'll just, I, eyeball I stole it. it out of a game outside. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're going to go with it. And if the questions are finished, I'll come up with some more. And uh, let's start. Okay. All right? Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You were stranded on a desert island. What would you bring? Um, uh, 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 two things. Water and uh, granola. Favorite co-star? On the show? Mm -hmm. uh, Freddie Smith. Okay. Dream co-star? Dream co-star. That's on the show or just any actor? Anywhere. Blah, blah, blah. Mm. Brian Cranston. <laughs> TV or film? Uh, wherever the writing is best. And, and I think right now it's equal. If anything, TV. Favorite city traveled? <laughs> Bucharest, because there's just so much trouble to get into there. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, well, that was really quick. I'm still going to ask you some of these questions because I kind of want to know. Okay. Um, 
All right, this is a good one. Uh, if you had to wake up in bed next to any celebrity in Hollywood, who would it be? Um. <clears throat> Jennifer Lawrence or Mila Kunis um, or Tom Hardy is so sexy just oh just because it's Tom gosh. Hardy, you know, like it's you know. I okay, mean, Big Spoon or Little Spoon? Big Spoon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, guilty pleasure. Do you have one? Yeah. Um, Twix bars and Diet Coke. Like, that's, like, my Picks. default. Like, if I needed some energy and I'm on set, just Twix bars and Diet Coke. Or Guys, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. We can hang. Oh, my God. We can hang. Okay, well, This we'll... is right up my alley. Um, what was the last thing you Googled? Um, I actually, I, I Googled... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm writing a screenplay uh, w with, a, with a friend of mine, and mm -hmm. so it's... Um, it sort of, you know, pertains to a, you know, to a, to a culture other than ours. So I was Googling uh, just some locations that related to, uh, to parts of South Africa and stuff. Okay. So just kind of geography. All right. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite song right now? Uh, it's called I Want to Get Better by Bleachers. Okay. Yeah. Boxers or briefs? Boxer briefs. I, I, I guess <laughs> probably briefs. more, probably more, probably more briefs, probably more like a little more snug. Stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, favorite song to sing in the shower? Um, mm, mm, under my thumb, Rolling Stones. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Uh, most embarrassing moment. Um, uh, when I was uh, when I was like five or six, I was in the Nutcracker doing just like doing background like ballet. It was like a ballet program. Okay. Um, so I guess technically that was my first performance, but it wasn't acting. Anyways, it was tech rehearsal. We're in the cafeteria. And I was sitting with my sister, who's, who's about, you know, a year younger than me, and uh -huh. this other girl, um, who's about our age. And we're all having hot chocolate, because it's Christmas. And right. this other girl spills it, spills this hot chocolate onto my lap, and it's hot. And I stand up, and it's like burning, oh. and my mom's there. She doesn't want me to get these burns on my legs, so she pulls down my tights. So I'm just right there in, in my underwear in front of the entire cast, um, like, crying because my legs are burning, and <laughs> my pants are at my ankles. And so that... That was embarrassing. Okay, one final question I have for you, okay. and then I will let you go. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite TV show on right now? On right now. That you're currently watching. There's a couple. I'm going to go with uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Okay. Generally, I'm more into drama, but there's mm -hmm. that show just really, it just kind of makes me feel good. Amazing. Even though they're such mean people. But I love it. Well, we are TV people here, so we're glad to know that you watch it. Yes. Uh, I want to thank Guy Wilson for coming in today <laughs> after Buzz TV. Bleachers. All right. Oh, it's he's the playing song. Bleachers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where can we find you on social media, sir? Uh, I'm on Twitter. It's at the Guy Wilson because this guy in England already took Guy Wilson. Oh. Um, so it's T H E, capital T H E, Guy Wilson. And that's the same for me on Instagram as well. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jillian Leff, on my Instagram at Jilly Leff, or my website, JillianLeff.com. And I am starting to host the Fargo After Show tonight, live at 8.05 p.m. on AfterBuzzTV.com. So if you like that movie, the show seems cool. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. This has been so fun. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Jillian. Until next time, you guys. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.